Hi, my name is Dan Keane. I'm a composer, producer and musician based in London. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. I'm really excited to get into today's video, but before I do, I just want to give a quick shout out to my friend Kitty O'Neill, otherwise known as March Official UK, who, if you didn't know, has just released a brand new album, her debut album, that I recorded, mixed, produced and played drums on. This has been a project that we've worked on for the last two or three years, and we're both really proud to finally get this thing out into the real world. And I know it would mean a lot to her and to me if you'd check it out and see what you think. Now, she's quite difficult to find because of her name, so I'm going to leave links down below to any of the streaming platforms that you might be interested to get it from. And as you probably know, often the best way to support musicians is to get it through Bandcamp or to buy physical CDs and merchandise and things like that. So I'll leave all of her details down below. And if you'd like to check out the album, I'd be really grateful. The reason I bring it up today, not only because it's just come out, but also because this new library, Cassette Drums, is actually a library of those drums that I recorded a year and a half, maybe two years ago now. Um, it was one of the first things we recorded on the album. We recorded at a little studio it's called Spiral Studios uh, here in the UK. And basically, we'd recorded a whole load of acoustic parts that we were going to put onto the album. And then we decided to sample the drums in case we wanted to do any pickups, but also to maybe turn into a warped kind of electronic library. That then just lived in a Pro Tools session for the next couple of years. And recently, I was thinking about what I could do with it, what I could maybe kind of mangle and warp. And I decided that a particular drum sound that I really like at the moment is that heavily saturated cassette-driven uh, tone. So I went into the Pro Tools project, rescued what samples I could, and then put them through a whole load of actual cassette tapes, compressed it with the DBX160, and gave it a real kind of DK aesthetic that I'm really kind of happy with at the moment. It's got quite a gritty upfront sound to it. Um, but what results is a Contact 5 library that is free for you to download from pianobook.co.uk, and it looks like this. Now, regrettably, the UI doesn't really serve other than to motivate you as a bit of a mood board to get you in the zone. Um, I was thinking about adding all kinds of like reverb knobs and maybe EQ and tone and things like that, but I think you're going to put this through your own plugins anyway. So having kind of mangled and warped the samples, I decided that actually I'd create a tone that works best for me and then put it out into the world and you can do with it what you like. Um, I think that is what Piano Book is all about, um, driving a particular idea uh, to its destination and then and then kind of parking it there. So these drums, they're not the best recorded samples in the world, but I think that kind of adds to the character. We've got three round robins of everything, and then we've got a variety of dynamic layers. If I just give you a quick performance here. It's got lots of character baked in. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit under the hood here just to kind of show you how it works. Now, we've got kicks, snares, toms, hats, cymbals. We've got a couple of interesting things here. So this is the kind of crash. We've got a ride. And then we've got a couple of little edges. Uh, when we were recording the album, I was doing little hits on the sides of the cymbals, which gives you quite a metallic, kind of transient sound. Now, as you can probably imagine, the harder you hit the samples, the more it's driving into the cassette tapes. Um, so if we just listen to the very softest sounds. And so I would favor those slightly harder hitting sounds. It's the same with the toms as well. But alongside just the main snare hits, I also did some cross stick and also some kind of long and short presses. So you can kind of roll into the snare. Or you could use the shorter press to kind of go in between little cross stick hits. So 
So this is going through a little bit of effects at the moment. It's actually going through an outboard chain um, just to kind of, so I can really sell it to you. Um, I'm putting this through the seventh heaven, which is my absolute favorite reverb. I'm going to do a review of this very, very soon. Uh, and then it's actually going out and back in through the DBX. But if I just take this off a second, because I can already feel the hate from some people saying, oh my God, I don't have that. Well, okay, let me just show you how it sounds out of the box. Now I wanted to record this with actual physical tapes because I thought that would give a really nice kind of unique crunchy sound. And so my friend Ed and I decided to run the samples out of a rig into the cassette tapes, record them, and then play them back and record them back into our DAWs. And so you can get that really kind of natural gritty tone. We found with the main drums that they sounded amazing, but with the cymbals and the hi-hat, it just had a strange kind of wobbly pitch to it. I don't know if this was just the state of the tapes we were using. A lot of the time they were brand new tapes. When they had been erased a couple of times and maybe cleaned, um, we just found that it wasn't it wasn't really sitting that well. So in the end, we decided to use for the cymbals and the hi-hats to put them through cassette plugins um, and try and emulate it as best as we could against what we already had. So I was using a combination of things like the sketch cassette from uh, Aberrant DSP and also the cassette plugin from Waves Factory using the combination of both of those and then just using kind of EQ and compression to try and tie it all together. Now, one thing you'll notice if you scroll down here into the bottom is that in the insert effects, I've also added a couple of extra little bits of saturation. So 28.3% saturation here, and then I've added a little bit of tape saturation as well. Now, the reason for this is because we realized when we were listening to our favorite drums and our favorite records that there's a particular kind of glue and cohesion that comes with a record or tape cassette effect on a whole mix. It's not just the individual sounds that are combined together. And so when we were sampling this, we realized that while it sounded really good on its own, as soon as you start layering these things together, it missed that kind of that slight gluing effect uh, that tape and records have. So we are not doing it too heavily here. It's just a little bit. And if you don't like it, of course, you can turn it off. Um, but that was something that definitely kind of helped a little bit. And then finally, I've just got a very, very short, very small amount of reverb that you probably can't even really hear. Uh, this is mainly just because I like the way that this outboard rig sounds. It just helps give it a little bit of space. It's got a slight kind of low frequency bias to it. Um, and I actually used an EQ before pushing it through the tape. So that tends to distort a little bit more heavily than others. But of course, you can add your own effects to these things. And I'd be really curious to hear the way that you integrate them into your demos. So. As you probably know by now, this is available to download for free down below. Just click on the links, pianobook.co.uk. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, I would really highly recommend it because there are lots of very exciting things coming soon. Um, I'm trying to make these videos once a week and I've actually really enjoyed getting back into it lately. So thank you for your support so far. Lots more instruments coming like this as well. I've got an exciting one, which I'm going to keep a secret for now, coming for the Piano Book Advent Calendar. So stay tuned for that. And of course, lots of other things in between. Thanks again, and I hope to see you very, very soon. Goodbye.